everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is Christopher here, as always, with Tom. Tom, how are you today? Not too bad, and actually kind of excited to talk about this one. Yeah, this film is a little bit of a higher quality than many of the uh, screeners that we get. Indeed. Uh, The film we're talking about today is New Life from 2023. It was written and directed by John Rossman. And it stars Sonia Walker, Haley Aaron, and Tony Amendola. In the film, Jessie Murdoch is a young woman on the run and trying to reach the Canadian border. On her trail is a federal agent, Elsa Gray. The truth about Jessie and why she's being pursued is slowly revealed in flashbacks, while the dark reasoning of Elsa's boss, Raymond, to assign Elsa to this manhunt also comes to light. As the mystery and bodies pile up, the audience discovers that for both women, it is a race against time as well as each other. I wasn't sure what to think of this one, even when we got the the link for it, Mm -hmm. and even watching the trailer. You know, this thing's listed as like a a thriller horror. Yeah. And I think even some places throws in like sci-fi. And then you watch the trailer and like feels more like police procedural but you know okay yeah. but then you do see a woman in like a hazmat kind of outfit you're like okay let's see what this is all about yeah. and give it a shot this one would be i could think hard to peg down a genre which is part of what i love about it i'm gonna admit and i, I want to go ahead and say this now i got to a point in this film where my attitude about it changed a lot. Yeah. I was uh, I was fully vested. You know, they, they did a really great job of kind of building this mystery of what's going on. You get the few little flashbacks, you know, just enough to try to get your mind to sort of try to put things together on your own. You know, what's happening? What's going on? Okay, okay, so we... we, we figured out something we we now know that there's a, a a virus and you know and it looks like maybe this this jesse is carrying this thing mm-hmm. and so something's happening and then we get to about the 44 minute mark where we discover that this virus oh well, it's a rage virus uh, and this is like 28 days later or something i wasn't sure you were gonna actually uh, reveal that <laughs> Uh, I think it's kind of important. I, I... It, it it is, but see, that's oh, it, it did it didn't that didn't end anything for me because mm-hmm. um, their approach to it uh, uh, the the first off the slow burn uh, of the film was just incredible. Like at the beginning, you really don't know what you're watching. But they've engaged you. You're in it. Um, you're following this young woman as, as it's clear she is essentially running for her life. But we don't know why. We, we, and and the way that they just let it kind of unfold through uh, bringing the investigator in, um, the stuff that we reveal while she's with people, I almost kind of didn't want it to get into flashbacks. Like I kind of wanted it to just let it reveal through what is learned as if it's real time kind of thing. Like you don't live her life. Uh, let's just take it from that. So actually the flashbacks kind of pulled aw- was the only thing that took away from me. But the notion that yes, a rage virus in this case and the lengths that it does go to, the notion that we're catching the moment when we're at the, be- the very beginning of one of these. I mean, there have been movies that have explored the 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 beginning of that. But it's inevitable that you're just going to get the full-blown zombie movie. Yeah. Um, this gives you enough that maybe we're we're meters away from not having to go full-blown apocalypse here. And it's all told just through the lives of these two women. And that's amazing. It was really cool. I liked it. Yeah, you could almost call this film a, a prequel to mm-hmm. something like 28 Days Later. Yeah, in fact, uh, with, uh, not giving anything away, they just leave you 
even after we get to the conclusion, there's enough itch in, in your brain that goes, well, where did we land with our ending? <laughs> it was just, for me, it just felt like a, um, you had something that isn't done always and isn't always done well. Right. And then you bleed up to a very tired trope, in my opinion. And it, it took me out of the film for a, a little while. And, I, I, of course, I still finished the film and I watched it to the end. And I saw, you know, fortunately, it didn't go into full, uh, full-blown mobs of sure. rage virus. Yes, we didn't go full 28 days later. No, no. And I really was expecting that it would. So kudos for them for, you know... Uh, the restraint? <laughs> the restraint, yes. <laughs> tell your story. Tell the story you're telling and don't go beyond that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, they did a good job with that, but I think you could also argue then would be, then what's the point? You brought this up and then you're just going to kind of just let it drop? One, I don't feel like it, they let it drop. I... I, I I kind of like that they give you that hook to to titillate you, um, but this was still very much rooted in the story of the two women, and the fact that the investigator is suffering from ALS in, in this, um, and they make that part of it in both the way that the characters behave, but even the really dark reason she's assigned in the first place. <laughs> Um, and that the reveal of that, yeah, I, I was all in on this and I don't mind that they, they picked up on the zombie trope, but the way that they did it, it it's an aside. It, it, it's a potential to a disaster that we're working to prevent. We have an opportunity here and that's what they're trying to do. I don't know. I, I, I dug it. I, I mean, if you want to argue tropes, we can basically dismantle everything we've ever watched. Ever. <laughs> uh, that's a very good point. <laughs> so when somebody does it right and effective and, and makes it not about that, makes it, I'm interested in the characters and this is just the ticking time bomb that we're dealing with. The, to that effect, uh, it, it, if it was just a, a procedural, we could have been trying to go defuse the bomb that the <laughs> that the villain had left somewhere either way you needed something to be working against the timeline to to do uh, you had to give uh, you had to have skin in the game in this case literally um, and that's how it kept you motivated in this hurried story that we were watching no there's so much about the film that I did like uh, the acting I think was really great uh, compared to certainly compared to a lot of the screeners we've watched and a lot of the independent films that we've seen uh, this is really impressive acting I think it was very well directed interesting and you were you you kind of touched on it a little bit with what you just said the idea of the the character traits and and you know how the characters that we we had to deal with the woman with the ALS and you know trying very hard to ignore it and realizing she can't uh all very important and yeah the uh again don't want to go into too many details but why she was assigned to this <laughs> is uh mm -hmm. and how she kind of takes it and what she does and how to, how she deals with that information once she finds out why she was assigned it. There's at no point that I don't believe that this isn't a thing that could be literally happening right now in these people's lives. They, it, the way that was presented was really well and it was so well executed. Overall, I, I still liked it. I just, I don't know. It was, it, it was just, I felt like it, it just took the wind out of my sails when it went there. And then I just felt like, okay, you, you've gone there but now you're not going to do anything with it. So I don't know, maybe, I mean, I understand your points and looking at it from your point of view, uh, you know, absolutely. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it just kind of really struck me and it just took me right out of it. And I guess I had a hard time getting myself back into it. 
Well, you know, we don't always feel the same on each. I absolutely adored this. Uh, in fact, uh, I had to break away from it uh, long enough to do something else. Uh, go pick up my son. And I actually... Some of our screeners have been slogs. So <laughs> the, this one was like, damn it, I need to get back to this. I want to know what happened. So no, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I would recommend this highly. <laughs> All right, very good. I would give it a, a tentative recommendation. Tom gives it a full recommendation. Yep. Uh, it is currently streaming and it is available here in the States. Uh, if you're on the uh, other side of the pond in the UK, that is set for digital release on the 3rd of June. And I, I think that's how we ended up with this uh, particular screener is mm -hmm. because of the UK release. But I'm, I'm very thankful that that is why. And I'm very, I, I'm glad I watched it. Yeah. I, is because of the nature of how it's sort of unable to be marketed because you don't know what kind of film this is, uh, I think I probably would have skipped it thinking it's going to be one of those, oh, they say it's this, but it's that's just not. And maybe it is kind of is. I wouldn't call this a horror. No, but it has some good scare points. <laughs> yeah, there's horrific elements, but I wouldn't call it a horror. So if you're looking for pure horror, this no. is not maybe the film for you. No, this is uh, uh, definitely a little more cerebral. A little bit more psychological, a mm -hmm. little bit more of a thriller, a bit of a mystery. Yes. I, I had to have a soft spot for the, uh, the genre bending kind of uh, things, and I know they always get marketed terribly. So um, please give this one a shot. I think you'll like it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, check out New Life, and if you do, uh, we'd love to hear what you thought of it. Drop us a line at timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com or follow the big link tree link that's in the show notes and find all our social media outlets. And we'll be back in a week with a full episode. So until then, thank you very much for listening. Bye, everybody. See you.